Hello and welcome back to this uh, lecture 14 on microsystems fabrication by advanced manufacturing processes. A quick recap of what we had done in the last uh, lecture. So, basically we were trying to study the various effects of uh, um, ECM processes by looking at the kinematics and the dynamics of the process. So, what we really modeled or did is that we assumed that there is a work piece uh, as indicated here and then there is a tool surface uh, indicated below okay and uh, this work piece is moved slowly towards the tool in minus y direction this uh, being the y axis this is the minus y direction so the work piece is moved like this and then we assume that there is a uh, movement rate or feed of this particular workpiece towards the tool assumed to be f. What we also uh, try to investigate is that while the ECM process would continue from this surface, there would be a slow dissolution of the surface indicated. And this would result in a change in the uh, the total thickness of the work piece. Okay. So, that uh, uh, would result or amount to the fact that there is a feed which is happening in the negative y direction as is indicated by this arrow here and then there is an upward movement of the surface because of the dissolution or a change in thickness of the work piece which is happening in the exactly opposite direction. And so, we found out that <coughs> we can actually represent this whole uh, kin kinematics by looking at the rate of change of y, y is the distance between the work piece and the tool surface and also y is a function of t as you know because there is a continuous dissolution and feed of the work piece towards the tool. So, the dy by dt or the rate of change of this gap y between the work piece and the tool was estimated as a times of j by rho z f minus feed f here where z is the valency of the metal which you are uh, dissolving a is the atomic weight j is the current density vector which is nothing but the current per unit area rho is the density and uh, f of course is 96500 coulomb okay so therefore that's what the dy by dt uh, would amount to or look like and then you know if you uh, just substitute the formulation for the current density which is also represented as the conductivity of the solution minus the valuable voltage which is v minus delta v <coughs> delta v is the over voltage potential which is has to be given in the design voltage so that the uh, amount of machining that you are intending should take place divided by yt where y is the gap okay so this expression really amounts to uh, dy by dt equals a times of the value for j divided by rho z f y minus f and then we assumed this whole term here to be some constant lambda which is dependent on the setups and the processes and we can write this whole expression as lambda by y minus f. So, eventually that is what dy by dt or the rate of change of the gap between uh, work piece and tool would amount to. So, this is the component coming from the dissolution of the surface, this is the component coming from the feed of the tool or work piece towards the tool. So, now let us consider different cases in which uh, various values of feed can be assumed and uh, we try to eventually discuss or find out what is the net equation between y and these different parameters lambda f so on so forth for doing uh, the surface analysis. Okay. So, the case 1 
is a case where we assume the feed to be 0. Okay. So, therefore, the work piece is a static with respect to the tool at time t equal to 0. And of course, as time progresses, so at higher values of time t, the dissolution would lead to the movement of the front of the workpiece away from the tool. Okay. So, if we substitute <coughs> this intended value in the equation d y by d t equals lambda minus f. So, f is 0 here or y becomes equal to y dy times of lambda dt. Okay. Assuming that the gap was y 0 to begin with and it goes to some value y and uh, corresponding to time instances 0 to some value t. So, the y square becomes equal to y 0 square plus twice lambda t. Okay. So, that is how uh, this particular equation would be and if you plot the value of y with respect to t, it would uh, typically look like something like this here. Okay. This value is y 0 and uh, corresponds to the value of the gap between the tool and the work piece at time t equal to 0. And this is the extrapolated front, uh, which assumes that uh, what would happen when y actually uh, becomes um, negative at the y, y becomes 0 at a negative point of time. So, uh, typically this is like a parabolic equation, the equation for a parabola as indicated by this uh, y square equal to y 0 square plus 2 lambda t here. And uh, that is how the distance would behave with respect to time when the feed f is considered to be 0. Let us uh, analyze another particular case uh, in uh, this particular uh, you know uh, process of constant feed. Okay. So, in this case, an ever increasing gap being not desirable as was seen in the case 1. in an ECM process. So, the electrode is provided with a constant feed velocity of suitable magnitude. So, obviously, f equal to a constant. Okay. So, what eventually would happen is that there would be an illustration or there would be uh, a case where uh, the feed actually becomes equal to the rate of dissolution of the work piece front.
In other words, there is an equilibrating condition which would arise. So, this is the work piece okay, and this is the tool surface. and this is the y value with respect to <coughs> let us say uh, the x y z coordinate system. And uh, the illustration is that this work piece starts uh, moving towards the tool at a constant feed. Okay. So, in the equilibrating condition the amount of dissolution leading the surface work piece surface away from this tool surface is exactly equal to the amount of feed of the workpiece surface. Or in other words, in that case, the gap y is maintained as a constant equilibrium gap y e q. Okay. Uh, why equilibrium? Because it is essentially the two processes of the surface moving away from the tool because of uh, dissolution and the speed at which the whole workpiece is pro uh, propagating towards the tool, they are kind of in equilibrium with each other, they are constant. Okay. So, d y by d t becomes equal to 0 in that particular illustration and that can be represented as lambda by y e, where this y e or y e q is the equilibrium gap as already proposed before minus f. In other words, the equilibrium gap in such instance can be calculated by using lambda by f, which again means because you know that there is a certain specific value of lambda that we are talking about. So, it basically can be represented as k times a times v minus delta v the total amount of potential minus over potential times rho z coulombic uh, the faraday constant times of f okay so that's how the equilibrium gap would look like between the tool and the workpiece surface and uh, because of that reason uh, the condition of equilibrium would really come into picture. So, now let us just slightly change the paradigm and uh, because you know ECM itself as a process is uh, to be applied to microsystems eventually. Uh, the, the whole uh, kinematics or dynamics of the process should be scale independent or should be made at least scale independent. Okay. And for doing that, uh, we need to somehow non dimensionalize the equation in a manner. So, that irrespective of whatever be the scale, the scale is known by its uh, length scale or time scale okay, or velocity scale. And then everything is ratio metric in comparison to these scales established at any particular level of operation. So, if it is a meso scale or if it is a micro scale, if it is a macro scale, accordingly what is varying is the scaled quantities like the velocity scale may vary, the length scale may vary, the time scale may vary so on so forth and then the equation can rhyme at every scale. So, it becomes completely independent of the scale. So, let us prepare a way or a method where we can non dimensionalize this equation okay. and then we will see later on that how important this is in terms of things like roughnesses etcetera which can be predicted experimentally and otherwise using this uh, non dimensionalization approach. So, let us now use two non dimensional numbers y dash and t dash okay such that the value of y dash is represented as the actual y divided by the equilibrium gap in other words this estimates or this gives an idea of how many times the equilibrium gap is actually the gap between the tool and the workpiece at a certain point of time at a certain instance of time. And also uh, let us uh, assume, so because y is already defined earlier in this particular case as lambda by f, we can uh, just substitute the value of y into this equation and write this down as f y by lambda. Okay. So, let us call it 1 and uh, for the time scale. So, this is actually the, uh, we, we can say that y is the uh, the gap scale or equilibrium gap scale or the length scale 
at any particular uh, range of operation, it is the scale which varies and the ratios kind of remain same and the, the final equation which will result will be in terms of ratios okay, of to that to, to, to those scales. So, the other thing is the times time ratio t dash which is represented by the actual time by the time that is needed to cover up this equilibrium gap assuming that the uh, the tool is moving at a feed rate of f with respect to the work piece. So, the amount of time that the equilibrium gap would need to be covered up if a, a f is the feed with which the work piece is moving towards the tool the amount of time is y e by f. Okay. So, you are basically ratio ratio metrically comparing the time uh, which is available uh, to this parameter y e by f okay, uh, in a manner that again this can be substituted uh, for the value of y e and made lambda by f square. So, this comes out to be f square t by lambda. So, let us call it equation 2. So, you have now a time ratio and you have now a length ratio as y dash uh, or t dash and y dash respectively and they have uh, been somehow expressed as the, the scaled uh, quantities by f y by lambda and f square t by lambda in both the cases. So, let us now see what d y dash by d t dash would really look like. So, d y dash by d t dash where these are all the ratios and we are trying to now build up an equation only based on the ratios would actually be equal to d y dash by d t times of d t by d t dash. In other words, uh, you can write this down as d y dash by d t divided by d t dash d t. Okay. So, just using the chain rule. So, here uh, the d y dash by d t comes out to be equal to f by lambda d y by d t from 1 okay, from this particular equation and the other d t dash by d t comes out to be equal to f square by lambda times of 1 d t by d t from 2. Okay. So, therefore, uh, we can represent this in fact as uh, f 1 by f d y by d t and d y by d t as you all know is basically uh, represented by lambda by y minus f from the previous equation right where we talk about the how the equilibrium gap changes with respect to time assuming a certain lambda by uh, uh, lambda by y sorry not f this is y okay, lambda by y minus f and so that is what the d y dash by d t dash would be in this particular case and uh, we can further modify it by taking this f inside the bracket and making it lambda by f divided by y minus 1 and as you know that lambda by f is actually 1 by y dash or y by y dash from this equation here okay, and uh, from equation 1 and so therefore, this becomes 1 by y dash minus 1. In other words, d y dash by d t dash is equal to 1 by y dash minus 1 and this is the scaled version of the equation. Mind you, these are all ratio metric quantities with respect to the length scale or the time scale. d y dash is that with respect to the length scale d t dash with respect to the time scale so on so forth. And now, what you very easily can observe is that this equation has gone independent of the feed because the feed is somehow buried inside the information for the time ratio t dash which is equal to equilibrium gap per unit feed y e by f. So, that is uh, how uh, you kind of um, have a relationship between all ratios a non dimensional relationship. And what I would be now interested to do is to somehow uh, manipulate this uh, in a manner by integrating with respect to time to see how y dash and t dash would vary as an equation. So, let us look at that part. So, you have d y dash by d t dash becomes equal to 1 by y dash minus 1, okay, meaning thereby that y dash by 1 minus 
y dash dy dash becomes equal to dt dash and uh, this uh, can further be integrated with uh, respect or between some quantities or limits ok. And uh, we can just uh, uh, simply look at both sides and try to solve what these values would be like. Uh, in fact, the left side could be solved by considering a little bit you know partial fractions. So, this whole thing can be represented as 1 plus y dash minus 1 okay, divided by 1 minus y dash times of d y dash okay, and that is equal to integral of d t dash and uh, further you can just split this up into two integrals. Uh, so, you have one integral 1 by 1 minus y dash d y dash plus or maybe it is a minus uh, because uh, the signs are different in both minus integral of just simply d y dash okay, on one side and integral of d t dash on the other side. And uh, in fact, uh, if we solve this uh, little further <coughs> we get that t dash as an indefinite integral t dash is actually equal to minus of y dash minus l n 1 minus y dash plus some value k. Okay. So, let us look at the boundaries and the limits to obtain this value of k. So, we know that with the initial conditions that we started with were that this y dash would be some y dash 0 at time t equal to 0, meaning thereby as you already know y dash is nothing but uh, from the previous formulation, it is basically y upon y e or f by lambda upon y and you can assume that at time t equal to 0 this y was actually equal to some value y 0. Okay. So, y dash 0 can then be defined as just y 0 by y e and that is what y 0 is y dash 0 is at time instance t equal to 0. Okay. So, if we put this value here and uh, of course, uh, as you know the other formulation t dash was calculated by looking at the actual time uh, with respect to y e by f okay. or in other words it was calculated as f square t by some value lambda. So, we can assume that at time t equal to 0 when y was y, y 0 and y dash 0 becomes equal to y dash the, uh, the, the time t equal to 0 would also correspond to t dash equal to 0. Okay. So, typically when we are saying at time instance 0 t dash is 0 and y dash is y 0 dash. Okay. This is y 0 by y e at some particular beginning time uh, of the process this becomes just a ratio of y 0 with respect to the equilibrium gap. So, we put these values here. So, t dash 0 is 0 here and we get 0 equals minus y dash 0 minus l n 1 minus y dash 0 plus k and k becomes equal to y dash 0 plus l n 1 minus y dash 0. So, that is what uh, the value of k is and if we uh, substitute this value uh, of k back into the equation okay, in, in question, then uh, the formulation that would finally have would be of the type t dash equal to minus y dash minus l n 1 minus y dash plus k value which is y 0 dash plus l n 1 minus y 0 dash. In other words, uh, t dash can be expressed as y 0 dash minus y dash right plus ln 1 minus y 0 dash 
by 1 minus y dash. So, that is how uh, the time ratio can be expressed in terms of the length ratio, where this ratio is with respect to either the equilibrium gap y e and the time ratio is with respect to the, the amount of uh, time which is needed by uh, a tool going through a feed f with respect to the work piece to cover that equilibrium gap y e. So, that is how you basically uh, try to uh, the plot the various relationships together and obtain a relationship on a ratio scale. And this ratio is valid over all the different scales be it meso, be it micro, be it nano, okay, uh, uh, be it macro, any scale this ratio would be valid because it depends really on that length scale or the time scale for that range of dimensions that are in question. Okay, so, now let us try to make something useful out of this plot and try to plot uh, the parameters t dash and y dash and see the various interpretations of what is uh, important out of this equation. So, if we really plot uh, the t dash and the y dash together in a uh, sort of uh, x y plot like this, you can find out that for various values of initial gap at time t equal to 0, uh, you know there is a plot which is for time t equal to 0, uh, y 0 is 4. Okay. There is a plot at time t equal to 0, y 0 is 3 or 2 or 1.5. So, these are different initial gaps uh, for the process. So, you are plotting y dash on the y axis here and t dash time scale on the x axis here. And you see eventually that after a certain t dash is achieved, after a certain t dash value is achieved, all these y dashes okay, come very close to 1, which means that as you know by definition y dash is nothing but y by y e. right? So, this coming close to 1 means that all gaps, whether it is higher gap 4, 3, 2, 1.5, so on and so forth, is basically tending to the equilibrium gap corresponding to y dash equal to 1 with time. Okay. So, if, if you look at this paradigm, you can always uh, see clearly that ECM or electrochemical machining is a sort of equilibrating process and the uh, perturbations on a surface or the roughness of the surface really are leveled to a point when the value of y becomes equal to be it whatever gap to start with, it becomes equal to at a certain time scale or time ratio, it becomes equal to the equilibrium gap. Okay. So, it uh, is a case where the feed and the dissolution rates are same to each other. So, whatever be the condition uh, in terms of gaps, uh, starting gaps between the electrode and the tool, eventually at a certain constant feed rate, it would arrive on to the equilibrium gap. This is a very important uh, conclusion out of all this uh, dynamics and kinematics of the whole ECM process that we have done so far. So, basically the uh, as we have seen that it is a self leveling process, the ECM is a self leveling process. And uh, let us look at all these from a perspective of defects uh, in terms of valleys and uh, hills on a surface okay, of a certain roughness. And then let us see if we can do something in terms of plotting that roughness function with respect to all these different y dash, t dash, so on and so forth. So, that is should be typically our endeavor at this time. So, let us uh, assume uh, that uh, the deviations from a desired surface okay, as uh, written here are the defects characterized by non dimensional depth or height delta dash. Okay. Now, let us look at it in a little more details as illustrated in this previous slide here that we are uh, working with the uneven work surface subjecting it to ECM. Uh, the work surface is shown here. So, there are certain valleys in the work surface, there are certain hills and these hills and valleys are all separated by delta dash whether in the positive or the negative direction. So, these are the sort of defects average uh, defects which are there on the surface which eventually the ECM process should uh, level to a certain uh, mean value. So, the portions are projecting outwards, uh, the hills is nearer to the tool surface this being the tool. So, these hills are nearer and simultaneously the amount of electric field which would happen between the hills and the tool would be more, the lines of forces would be more 
because uh, electric field is potential difference divided by d, d is lesser here. Okay. And the valleys are at some distance from the tool, which are higher diameter and therefore, uh, if you assume the same potential difference v over another distance d 1, where d 1 is much much greater than d 2. So, the amount of electric field available here is much more sparse and as you know that electric field and current density are sort of uh, directly proportional to each other and current density is the cause of movement of ions or machining. Therefore, current density is very high where the field is higher and very low where the field is lower. So, this guy gets dissolved away at a faster pace and this at a slower pace eventually equilibrating on the same surface. This is same as saying that ECM is a die sinking process as we have mentioned before many times while introducing this topic of ECM. So, therefore, uh, if you look at uh, the portions projecting outwards, they get machined more quickly on the projecting inward portions like cavities, they would not get machined that quickly and therefore, there is a smoothening out of the unevenness. So, if delta dash be considered as the desired deviation uh, in terms of defect from a mean value of the surface. So, uh, we can have an equation of uh, delta dash in terms of t dash. Okay. T dash as you know earlier is the ratio uh, parameter between the gap at a certain point y per unit, the way that equilibrium gap or the time taken by the equilibrium gap to be moved. So, uh, so t divided by y e by f is what the t dash was before. Okay. So, depending on whether the defect is a valley or a hill. Since delta dash equals y minus the equilibrium gap, let us say eventually the gap which would come is y e and delta dash is really how much above the equilibrium gap this y e is. If you assume that the surfaces become even at equilibrium okay, from this position, it goes to this position at equilibrium. So, y minus y e is delta uh, and uh, so this is delta not delta dash I am sorry and uh, delta dash is the comparison of this delta per unit the scale. Uh, which is available, uh, or the length scale which is available, which is really the equilibrium gap. So, delta by y e. So, this becomes equal to y by y e minus 1 and y by y e as you already, already know is y dash. So, it is y dash minus 1. So, delta dash emanating from this delta, the difference between the equilibrium gap eventually y e of a hill or a valley. Uh, let us say this is the smoothening line which corresponds to this line here. Okay. So, this is y e. So, if it is above y e or below y e, it could be a plus delta dash or minus delta dash as we have seen before as has been illustrated before. So, similar to so, so therefore, uh, you know in the same manner as you have illustrated this particular gap for a certain delta, delta is essentially uh, a case where y equal to delta. Right. So, the same equation should hold valid. So, therefore, t dash can be written down as some delta 0 dash at time t equal to 0. Okay. Assuming delta being equal to delta 0. So, delta 0 dash minus delta dash plus natural logarithm of delta 0 dash divided by delta dash. Okay. And uh, therefore, the, the whole idea is that uh, the t dash that we are looking into is actually uh, equal to this uh, delta 0 dash minus delta dash plus l n delta 0 dash by delta dash. Theoretically, if we look at when this delta would go to 0. Okay. Uh, so, it would take an infinite time to remove the defect completely, because uh, delta going to 0 means delta dash going to 0 and delta dash going to 0 means that this t dash 
which is exactly equal to t divided by y e by f if you may have recalled the way that time scale was defined would also depend on this ln of 1 something by 0 okay ln of infinity so it is undefined so theoretically it should take almost an infinite time for uh, the delta dash to completely go to 0 okay which may not be possible but uh, practically you have to just wait for uh, and sort of value where this delta dash is so small that it is insignificant in comparison to maybe the equilibrium gap y e ok. So, we really need to wait for just uh, a sort of time instance t up to which this delta dash may not be equal to 0, but very very close or negligibly small and can be considered for all practical purposes to be 0. Okay. So, that is how you can get an idea of when a surface of a certain average roughness again given by delta smoothens out due to the smoothening effect of an ECM process. Okay. So, if you start with a certain roughness, start with a certain surface roughness and your design specification says that you have to uh, have a roughness which is within a tolerable limit which has been given let us say or proposed by the design. You now have a basis of how much time you need to wait for an ECM process. So, that a certain roughness uh, to start with on the workpiece surface has been eventually smoothened to a desirable or a uh, desirable tolerance or desirable roughness or a desirable tolerance value which has been specified by the, the engineering department of a certain component. So, this is an advantage of doing this scaling theory or scaling equation that you get a time estimate of what would be the product surface roughness if you start with a certain uh, in this case for example, delta is the, the roughness which you are starting with and you are aiming for a delta to be so negligibly small uh, where you can consider it to be insignificant and therefore, t dash the time that is needed really times uh, time ratio that is needed. Uh, from going from delta to that small uh, value of delta which is negligible that is easily estimated by an equation like this. So, we can plot uh, the various things together in one dimensional plot as has been illustrated here and as one can very clearly uh, see uh, there are let us say the hill sides and valley sides of uh, the process where delta in the valleys uh, can be minus delta. Oh, sorry plus delta and delta in the hill side can be minus delta. And you can see that if the initial defect size is given on the x scale here meaning thereby that this corresponds to some delta 0 okay. and delta 0 dash of course, is what it is delta 0 per unit equilibrium gap as that is this the time the, the, the roughness ratio. Okay. So, you are starting with this particular delta 0 value as you can see here okay. and the delta 0 can be either a minus delta 0 if it is a hill or if it can be a plus delta 0 if it is a valley. And then uh, on the y scale we are plotting here the depth of ECM in equilibrium gap units required to achieve the certain tolerance which is indicated. So, these are really. So, these really are the, uh, the so called depth of ECM in equilibrium gap units terms. Okay. So, the ratio uh, of the depth that is needed uh, in, in let us say uh, the so the y by y e value which is needed in, in terms of equilibrium gap units and the tolerances uh, that eventually come up or eventually are needed are indicated on these curves here. Okay. So, for example, if you want to achieve a tolerance of 0 0.01 uh, time that means uh, about 100th of the equilibrium gap that is how uh, I would like to mention this tolerance as. So, you have to start with a certain initial defect size let us say delta 0 dash and then you have to move so much in terms of units of equilibrium gap for this tolerance to come up. Okay. Or for example, if you want 
almost a 2 percent tolerance on the equilibrium gap. So, you will have to move so many units in the as, as mentioned in the y scale here in terms of equilibrium gap units. Okay. So, this much distance you have to move for eventually getting a 0 0.02 tolerance or if it is a 5 percent tolerance or a 10 percent tolerance you have to move correspondingly so many uh, you know distances in, in terms of the equilibrium gap units that means the y value essentially for hitting this tolerance. So, therefore, it is a very clear cut uh, specification sheet which has been generated which mentions about from what defect size or, or initial size of the defect. Uh, how much how much uh, y has to be moved by a particular uh, work piece towards the tool, so that you can achieve a certain percentage of the equilibrium gap as the tolerance size. So, that is how uh, the whole plot has been made generated and uh, this plot can be used as a sort of thumb rule for uh, you know a process engineer who is working in a ECM process. Okay. So, the, the, the plot is different if you go towards the plus delta side that is the valley side and uh, it is different for the minus delta side the hill side for obvious reasons that this gets depreciated much more faster than uh, oh sorry this gets depreciated much more faster the hills get depreciated much more faster than the valleys because the gap of the hills are lower with respect to the tool and the electric field intensity and the current density is much higher as has been explained before. So, let us actually now look at some numerical design problems. Uh, let us say in an ECM operation with a flat surface as you can see here uh, a 10 volt DC supply is used okay. and uh, the conductivity of the electrolyte is given here as 0 0.2 ohm inverse centimeter inverse the feed rate of 1 mm per minute is uh, used and work pieces of pure iron meaning thereby that uh, uh, there is a uh, the machining the, the, the surface to be machined is that of iron. So, all the uh, parameters related to the electrochemistry of iron needs to be known here and you are uh, wanting to calculate the equilibrium gap and uh, you consider that the total delta V the over voltage which has to be also taken into the design voltage is 1.5 volts. So, let us find out uh, first of all what are the different parameters for the workpiece material that is iron. So, for iron Fe the atomic weight of iron as you know is 58, 55.8, uh, 55.6 grams. Iron normally dissolves in divalent state, ferrous state Fe plus 2. So, that is equal to plus 2 at least the lowest valence state is treated here and uh, then the density of iron is 7.86 grams per centimeter cube. And uh, as we know that uh, the equilibrium gap y is given by lambda by f and lambda is conductivity times of the atomic weight of the particular species v minus delta v where v is the applied voltage delta v is the over voltage uh, divided by rho z f uh, coulomb or 96500 coulomb or Faraday's constant times of the feed rate f. Okay. And uh, we already know that the feed rate is given to be 1 mm per minute meaning thereby uh, it is 0 0.1 centimeter per 60 seconds. Okay. So, this is in centimeter per second 0 0.1 centimeter per 60 seconds and uh, we first find what y e is. So, the conductivity is 0 0.2 ohm inverse centimeter inverse atomic weight 55.6 times of v minus delta v as you know 10 volts is available voltage the over voltage is 1.5. So, you have 10 minus 1.5 as the V minus delta V term divided by 7.86 gram per centimeter cube which is the density okay, times valency which is plus 2 times of the, uh, the feed rate which is 0 0.1 by 60 times of this 96500 coulombs okay, which is uh, the Faraday constant uh, corresponding to this feed rate and therefore, uh, this uh, uh, can be calculated to be as 0 0.04 centimeters which is actually about 0.4 millimeters or 400 microns and that is about how the equilibrium gap would typically look like. So, you can have an estimate of what is the level of gap that we are talking about 400 microns is actually 4 times the 
diameter of human hair. Okay. So, that is how small the equilibrium gap is in any electrochemical machining process. And you can assume that the amount of pressures that are generated by the fluid which moves through such a small gap is huge. And therefore, sometimes if the pressure values uh, are rhyming with the ultimate yield stress of the material, then there is a possibility of the surface getting deformed, the electrode surface getting deformed, uh, because of um, uh, the pressures which are generated by the so called electrolyte. So, theoretically uh, the equilibrium gap though can have uh, any value, uh, but uh, there is one small constraint that is uh, important to be mentioned that for rough surfaces if the average roughness is above 400 microns, then in that case 400 microns cannot be an equilibrium gap, because it will result in shorting of the two surfaces. And so, that practical constraint has to be taken into picture that what is the average surface roughness and the equilibrium gap also has to be always at least more than twice the surface roughness. Okay. So, that is how uh, we have a thumb rule of how you can position this uh, the tool uh, with respect to the work piece ab initio when you start the process. Okay. So, so that is about how a ECM process would function. Let us actually do another numerical example here. Uh, of surface roughness with respect to the gap. So, you know that this is a highly irregular surface as you are seeing here of the tool as well as the work piece. And the surface irregularities of the electrodes uh, are 5 microns and 8 microns with respect to flat surfaces respectively. Thereby meaning that these are the irregularities with respect to the mean value of the surface. And in one case it is 8 microns in the case of work piece, in case of tool it is 5 microns. So, the total amount of equilibrium gap at least needs to be 8 plus 5 that is 13 microns for the process to be without short circuiting and still go on. Okay. So, if supposing the work is again of pure iron, we assume iron for the sake of convenience here as well. Iron is in fact the most uh, uh, machinable material with the ECM process also and a DC voltage is employed of 12 volts. Okay. So, you estimate the largest possible feed rate that can be used uh, and you assume the conductivity and over voltage to be the same as before. Okay. So, <laughs> here uh, for example, the minimum allowable value of the nominal gap So, that the electrodes do not touch each other is about 13 microns. Okay. So, typically the y e value in terms of centimeters is 0 0.0013 centimeters. The corresponding feed rate f is uh, again given by uh, the equation k a v minus delta v divided by rho z uh, Faraday constant times of the equilibrium gap. Okay. And uh, we know pretty much everything, we know that what is the conductivity, we can assume it to be the same as the previous question 0.2 ohm inverse centimeter inverse. This is known as 56 grams, this is about 12 volts over voltage employed uh, can be treated to be the same that is 1 point volts 5 volts. And uh, then of course, you have the density of iron as 7.86 grams, this can be plus 2, this can be 96500 and y e here is defined by this process as 0 0.0013 centimeter. So, the maximum allowable feed in this case also gets defined as 35 0.7 millimeters per minute, which suggests that uh, the, the feed rate cannot really go on increasing. It is really limited to uh, the amount of average roughness, which is available on the surface here. So, that it does not have to go uh, so close to a surface uh, that uh, there is a shorting or you know the ECM process modifies because of that shorting effect. So, uh, I think we are towards the end of today's lecture, but now uh, as we go on we will see 
some of the other parameters of design which are needed for an ECM process for example, electrolyte circulation or electrolyte boiling. Okay. And these phenomena would be very important because in a MEMS scale when we apply such processes uh, because uh, the feature sizes are too small they are more amenable to thermal uh, energy you know the, to getting heated up and getting evaporated or getting faster dissolved and therefore, uh, one has to be very careful to design even the electrolyte as a small simple thing as simple as even the electrolyte velocity in that process. So, with this I would like to end today's lecture. Thank you.